Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be. But you don't know where to begin. You have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable. And you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. If you have a success story you'd like to share, or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, our Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Healthy Star Pack, Glucogel Caps, any of the fine longevity products that you hear recommended or advertised on the Bright Side, please go to my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off our websites as well, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can also call the Bright Side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. Help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Earn thank you checks. Work out of your home. If you're an entrepreneur, it's a great way to enter into the business world, the nutrition business world. Offer a one-time $25 fee. If you don't want to start a business, you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee. You can be a longevity distributor and get all your longevity products at wholesale. Call 866-735-2470 for more information or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com. CriticalHealthNews.com and PharmacistBen.com. And I'd also like to remind you to please check out our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Transdermal C Serum, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. They're all up at TruthTreatments.com. We've got skin health information as well. And we have free shipping in July. Uh, which expires here in three or four days. So you've got three or four days to get free shipping on all our truth treatment products. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, silicon, oil, surfactants, emulsifiers, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth skin health products. 100% active and functional ingredients. There is nothing like that in the market. This is, these are not products. These are treatments, and they're extremely effective. Use tiny little bits if you're dealing with dry skin or aging skin, if you want to prevent aging skin, if you have dark spots or acne, you really need to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about the cholesterol hypothesis, this idea, this misguided idea that somehow cholesterol is the cause of heart disease. Nonsense, stupidity, medical ignorance. Cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease any more than flies are the cause of garbage. Yes, the cholesterol is there, but it doesn't mean it's the cause of heart disease. And statin drugs aren't going to make a difference. This is why all the studies on statin drugs show at best... One out of 100 people have, at best this is, one out of 100 people have one less heart attack. What they don't tell you is you're shutting down chemistry in the body, and that's never a good idea. 
cholesterol is not the cause of what is the nation's leading cause of death. That is heart disease. And poisoning cholesterol-making cells is not going to make you better. It's not going to make you healthier. Healthier. And this misguided medical idea that we can be drugged back into health or medicalized back into health is a meme, a bad meme, and a belief that only serves those who perpetuate it, i.e. the drug companies. And this is why we have so many cholesterol-lowering drugs and so many doctors and so many specialists and so many diagnostics and so many devices, and we are sicker than ever before. This is why we have an American Heart Association, which, by the way, generates nearly a billion dollars every year in revenue, and whose CEO, Nancy Brown, earns an annual salary of over a million dollars a year. This is why we have these, uh, an American Heart Association that has presided over a heart epidemic that, under its watch, has become the leading cause of death in the United States, with one out of two people expected to die from a heart attack or a stroke. So what's the real cause of heart disease? It's the same as the real cause of any disease. All diseases are the same in terms of their causes. It makes no sense to believe that you have just a specific cause of heart disease that doesn't affect anything else, i.e. cholesterol. It's just dumb on its face of it, on the face of it. Diseases are all caused by the same thing, an excessive and out-of-balance stress response. Not the stress response in general, but an out-of-balance stress response. And this manifests as inflammation, which is the calling card of the immune system. And folks, that is it. And you're talk, I'm talking here multiple sclerosis and ankylosing spondylitis and arthritis and you know, Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and fatty liver disease. And you name it. It's all the same thing. It doesn't matter where the disease is occurring. It matters that we're in dis-ease states. We're out of ease. We have an out-of-balance stress response, and it's true about all CDD, chronic degenerative disease, which affects 80% of our, which uh, is responsible for 80% of our health care costs and affects 120 million people. One out of three of us have a chronic degenerative disease. And millions of people have multiple chronic degenerative diseases. We're focusing, we're barking up the wrong tree. We're focusing at the, in the wrong area. It's not the cholesterol that causes the heart disease. It is the out-of-balance stress response. All disease is inflammatory disease, period. It involves dirty blood. It involves toxic cells. It involves deteriorating tissues. And from a, a recovery and healing perspective, it doesn't matter where the disease is. This is so easy. This is so simple. This is why we were, uh, every time I talk to somebody about their health, I repeat myself. You focus on the digestive system. You patch up a leaky gut. You stabilize your blood sugar. You relax, deep breathe, oxygenate, eat less food. It doesn't matter if, it's a heart dis- if the problem is, is heart disease or the problem is brain disease or the problem is bone disease or the problem is organ disease. It's all the same thing. All degenerative disease, all degeneration itself involves starvation, suffocation, toxification, leading to inflammation, which leads to more starvation, suffocation, and toxification, which leads to more inflammation, which leads to more suffocation, starvation, and toxification, and on and on it goes. And that includes heart disease. There's no surgeries. There's no medical professional. There's no diagnostic. There's no drugs that can address this. It's misdirection. From Science Daily, chronic uh, uh, psychological stress is associated with the body losing its ability to regulate the inflammatory response. This is the psychological component to disease, and make no mistake about it. Psychology is important. And by the way, when we talk about inflammation, I touched on this yesterday, we're talking about microscopic inflammation. And this is so important to recognize because when we think inflammation, we think of a broken leg or a sprained ankle, or the kind of swelling that you get when you have a black eye. We don't, it never crosses our mind, we never, nobody tells us that there is a microscopic analog to macroscopic inflammation that's obvious. So it doesn't seem like there's an inflammatory response because we're like, we're not inflamed, but it's microscopic. And this is so important to understand because this microscopic inflammation eventually shows up as macroscopic inflammation, and that's when we go to the doctor. Look.
back on the bright side. Our number Ben here. Our number 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the Ingevity products, the Ingevity business, if you're dealing with heart disease, you have a loved one dealing with heart disease, if you're on a statin drug and you want to wean yourself off, your statin drugs, there's no, you don't need to worry about weaning yourself off your statin drugs if you take care of, uh, if you take care of your heart using nutritional supplementation and dietary strategies and uh, the, the generic anti-inflammatory and, and anti-stress strategies we all have to do. You don't have to concern yourself about weaning yourself off a statin drug. It's not like, it's not like it's doing much of a difference anyway. And do you know 60% of people quit their statin drugs because of side effects and toxicity? Doctors hate when you quit taking your drugs, and patients, and we learned this in pharmacy school, that, quote, compliance, unquote, is the biggest problem when it comes to prescription drugs because most of us don't want to take our prescription drugs because we don't feel better when we're on them. That's your clue that, to tell you that you're, taking a, uh, you're interacting with a poisonous substance. If you don't feel good when you take your beta blocker, your calcium channel blocker, your, your statin drug, your antihypertensive drug, That's a sign, folks. That's a sign. That's something your body doesn't want to have. This is why people are non-compliant with their drugs, because there's an intuitive sense that these things are not good for us, and they're not good for us. Try chewing your statin drug. See what it tastes like. Your body will be so repulsed, it's going to be hard not to throw up. Try chewing it, tasting every little molecule. All right, 844 is our number. got lines open for you. We'll get your calls in the... In our next segment, lowering cholesterol is not going to help you when it comes to heart disease because it's not a cholesterol problem. But reducing inflammation, now you're talking. Anti-inflammatory strategies are not only going to protect your heart, they're going to protect your brain, they're going to protect your entire body, they're going to increase your lifespan, they're going to make you feel better, they're going to reduce the likelihood that you're going to be dealing with some kind of god-awful health challenge like cancer and autoimmune disease. Now we're talking when it comes to anti-inflammation. Inflammation is the body's response to bad living, to wrong foods, to too much foods, to nutritional deficiencies, to toxicity, to a lack of oxygen, to emotional. Don't forget the emotional aspect, the mental aspects, the spiritual aspects of health. Yes, inflammation can be, uh, can be increased by emotional trauma, post-traumatic stress syndrome, bad thinking, all of which we have control over. That's the take-home message here. We have so much more control over our health. We have so much control over the condition of our bodies, over the biochemistry of our bodies, and we've been told. The medical model wants you to think it's genetic. It's in your genes. I am telling you that we have control, even over our genes, via epigenetics. We have control without doctors, without drugs, without medical procedures. And once we understand this generic inflammatory nature, the relationship of the generic inflammatory system over degenerative disease, we will be liberated from medical tyranny. So while the cholesterol hypothesis is flawed and really nonsensical, if you understand anything about biochemistry, there are indeed strategies we can uh, we can use to to protect the heart, and none of them, none of them require a doctor, pharmacist, or any aspect of the medical model. They're all lifestyle-based, and guess what? Most of it has to do with how we eat. Most of it, most of us, most of it has to do, most of the, the protective mechanisms for, uh, protective strategies for our heart and our brain and our entire body involve food, involve digestion. This is the first point on the triangle of disease for good reason. In fact, if you know nothing else, if you do nothing else to take care of your health and you just control how you eat and you just protect and support digestive health using probiotics, using digestive enzymes, using apple cider vinegar with your meals, using connective tissue building supplements to build and regenerate connective tissue at the level of the intestine, just that alone will make a significant difference in your health and longevity. In the Lion Diet Heart Study published in the journal Circulation in 2001, survivors of heart attacks were split into two groups. One was put on the American Heart Association's recommended diet, which is basically the USDA food pyramid. The other was put on a Mediterranean-type diet, rich in fruits and vegetables, which we know contain those all-important polyphenols, which we've been talking about, fish, EFA supplements, 
At the end of four years, the two groups had exactly the same cholesterol levels. However, in the groups on the Mediterranean diet, there was more than a, there was a 70% reduction in both fatal and non-fatal heart attacks. They both had the same cholesterol. But the group that had the Mediterranean type diet had 70% less fatal and non-fatal heart attacks compared with the control group who subsisted on the American Heart Association approved food pyramid based diet, regardless of cholesterol levels. So some of the ways to protect the heart that have nothing to do with the medical model, that have nothing to do with statin drugs, are all strategies that we can apply from the comfort of our own living room, from the comfort of our own kitchen. The ketogenic diet. Anybody with heart disease should be exploring the ketogenic diet. The heart loves fat. The ketogenic diet, of course, is a high-fat, low-calorie diet. High-fat, low-calorie, low-carb diet. And remember, that's the key. Low-calorie has to go with high-fat. A lot of people try the ketogenic diet, but they eat too much protein or they eat too many calories, and they can't figure out why it's not working. The ketogenic diet is a high-fat diet, good fat, saturated fat, butter, coconut oil, avocados, eggs, fish, but it has, to go, it has to be used in combination with low calorie. Building connective tissue, another extra, uber, super important strategy for protecting the heart. Nobody ever tells us that the heart is, is largely dependent on connective tissue like everything else in the body. When we think of connective tissue, we think of the joints, we think of arthritis, but nobody ever thinks of heart disease. The heart sits on a framework of connective tissue. The connective tissue covers the heart. There's a little connective tissue bag that protects the heart. It's called the pericardium. A lot of folks have heard of a condition called pericarditis, which is an inflammation in the connective tissue of the heart, the pericardium of the heart, the bag that covers the heart. The heart sits on a framework or a skeleton of connective tissue. The connective tissue feeds the heart cells. When the connective tissue breaks down in the heart, you're more likely to suffer from arrhythmias and fibrillations, not to mention heart attacks and heart disease in general. It could very well be, it could very well be that heart disease is a connective tissue problem. Certainly, the connective tissue, the health of the connective tissue, the integrity of the connective tissue of the heart is thousands of times more important than your cholesterol levels. How do you build connective tissue? Glucogel caps. Bone soup, cartilage, collagen supplements, high hyaluronic acid, and of course the all-important connective tissue vitamin, vitamin C. This is why vitamin C is so important for the heart. This is why Dr. Matthias Rath wrote a book called Why Animals Don't Get Heart Attacks. Animals make their own vitamin C. Animals don't suffer vitamin C deficiencies, but human beings do. Animals don't get heart attacks, but human beings do. Now, I'm not, I don't know that it's a, a, a 100% correlation, but it could very well be that vitamin C deficiency is a, is a cause of heart disease, at least according to Dr. Matthias Rath. Why? Vitamin C is the rate-limiting step in the production of connective tissue. And by the way, if you have any connective tissue problems, max out on your vitamin C, grams of it a day. Other strategies for building connective tissue, make sure you're using your essential fatty acids. Very important for the generation of connective tissue. And don't forget bone broth protein, also important for the generation of connective tissue. You can get bone broth protein, by the way, at brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. You don't need a satin drug. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you. We'll get your calls here momentarily. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're dealing with heart disease, if you're on a statin drug, if you know somebody who's had a heart attack, if you want to prevent cardiovascular health issues, we can help you. If you it, or if you have any health challenges, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. You can sign up to join the bright side Ben team. Or you can just purchase products at 866-735-2470, or you can sign up right off our website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Shout out to Pete in Austin, Pete the FedEx driver. Talked to uh, Pete yesterday, told him I'd say hello on the air. Hope you're uh, having a good morning there, Pete, in Austin, Texas. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here momentarily. This is from uh, 
the journal Brain Plasticity, can a single exercise session benefit your brain? Yes, indeed it can. Even a single bout of physical activity can have significant positive effects on mind and mood and cognitive functions, according to the study that was published in the journal Brain Plasticity. There is no way to overestimate the critical nature of putting some stress on the body of doing some kind of intense workout but you know what you don't need to have a lot of it just a touch just five minutes a day can make a significant difference in your physical well-being as well as in your mental health just walking up the stairs briskly walking up the stairs briskly with a backpack on walking around the block briskly and by the way when you're trying to exercise you've got to make the body uncomfortable a lot of folks say well I just take walks in the park that's not exercise Exercise requires a certain level of intensity that makes the body uncomfortable. And in fact, if you're dealing with neuropathies or you're dealing with some kind of connective tissue problem or arthritis, it becomes even more important to exercise. Connective tissue is generated by movement. Connective tissue grows when we move. So stretching, exercise, yoga, these are all wonderful ways not just to build connective tissue, but also they can be important for mental health and brain health. Along those same lines, researchers at Goth University in Frankfurt, writing in the uh, medical journal Translational Psychiatry, have found that physical exercise can prevent dementia. Physical exercise is beneficial for the prevention of cognitive impairment in old age. And this is not just one study, there's numerous studies have shown this. Now they know exactly how it's done. It turns out that when you exercise, areas in the brain that are responsible for, for cognition have an increase. They increase uh, nerve cells. Uh, uh, the growth of nerve cells increases. Of course, Alzheimer's disease and, and dementia are resulted to a loss of nerve cells. Well, the opposite occurs when you exercise, when you put some stress on the body. If you know anybody who's dealing with dementia, if you, God forbid, are dealing with dementia issues or you want to prevent dementia, intense exercise two or three days a week, three or four days a week, and stretching every day, yoga every day, doing something physical every day can be one of the best health strategies. Again, no doctors required, no medical intervention required. From uh, U University of T uh, UT Southwestern Medical Center, this was... Uh, this was published in the journal Cell Metabolism. Eating at the wrong time affects body weight. It turns out that when we eat during the day, during daytime hours, we tend to gain less weight than when we eat at night. A great health strategy is to stop eating at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. A great health strategy is to limit your eating to, say, 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The hours when you're not eating between, between 4 in the afternoon and 11 o'clock the next day, your body will be generating ketones. You'll be ketogenic. It's a great way to, if you're doing the ketogenic diet, it's a great way to make sure that you're generating enough ketones is to give yourself a food holiday or a food break between the hours of 4 in the, eve, 4 in the afternoon and 11 o'clock the next day. Skip breakfast. I've often said breakfast is the most important meal to skip. Skipping breakfast is a great health strategy. You'll be generating ketones, and many people know that if they eat breakfast, especially the standard American breakfast of, of bacon and eggs and, and toast and danishes and orange juice and Pop-Tarts, that you feel tired at 10 or 11 o'clock. There's a good reason for that. Your blood sugar drops. That's why you need coffee at 10 or 11 o'clock. That's why we had to take a coffee break. So skipping breakfast is a great health strategy and making sure you're only eating during the daytime is a great way to limit the amount of, uh, uh, or to reduce the amount of weight that you put on in response to your food. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Time to hit the phones, and we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. Let's go to Idaho and welcome Wesley to The Bright Side. Good morning, my friend Wes. How you doing, buddy? Hello. Uh, pharmacist Ben, uh, reading a 500 page book, The Untold Story of Milk by MIT graduate Ron Schmidt, she's also okay. a naturopathic doctor. Here's a new word I found in this book Bacteria sapiens, Bacterio sapiens. Uh, Conscious that, bacteria? Ba bacteria sapiens. Uh, I guess the word was coined by Mark Ma McAfee, a dairy founder. Uh, okay. 
you know, since the book is about milk, of course. And in 1929, as late as 1929, uh, the Mayo Foundation said raw milk cures many diseases. Like I said, this is a 500-page book, and it covers a lot of uh, civilization and cultures and history and their use and treatment of milk. Uh, of course, when they started pasteurizing it, they they did horrendous, terrible things to milk. Now, I am actually allergic to milk. It doesn't matter whether it's pasteurized or not. Uh, but I bring home the raw, unpasteurized milk, and I do not put it in the refrigerator. About three or four days later, it turns to a, a curdled milk. It has curds and ways, you know, hmm. little Miss Muffet, and uh, I have no problem digesting it. Now, the taste changes a little bit. You don't have the milk sugar in there. The lactose, I guess the lactase uh, works on the lactose, and no longer is it quite as sweet, but I, I, I wanted to comment, is this not the way, the source of way that uh, you are talking about? I mean, where do you get? Yeah, no, that's, you're right. That's the source of way. When the, the way you make, the way you make way is by adding enzymes to the milk and it separates out the, the liquid fraction from the fatty fraction, the casein, which is a protein that tends to, tends to uh, be a little bit sticky and gummy. The casein turns into curd. And then the liquid portion is the whey. And then they used to throw that stuff out until somebody realized that that's got all the good stuff. The good stuff is in the whey. And by the way, the, the whey, which is in the liquid portion of the milk, also contains the antibacterial substances. The lactoferrin and such. Uh, milk is loaded with antibacterial substances and immune-boosting substances. So you, your point is very well taken. But I wanted, I wanted you to talk, tell me about this bacterial sapiens thing. That sounds kind of interesting. we got, we got to take a break, Wes. Will you stay on for, uh, stay on for the commercial? I want to talk to you about this bacterial sapien thing. That's kind of interesting. Okay. Don't go away. All right? I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information. Are you... Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We're talking to Wes in Idaho. Hey, Wesley. Yeah. Wes. So yeah, the, uh, to answer your question, the whey portion is where all the good stuff is. It's in the watery portion when you're making, uh, when, when you add enzymes to milk, it separates out into curds and whey. The curds being the casein portion, uh, which is also a, uh, can be a valuable protein. Uh, but this is really where people have problems when they have milk problems. Most of the time, it's in the casein. Uh, the whey portion, the watery portion, that's where the good stuff is, not just the whey, but also the immune boosters. Uh, and whey, is, whey itself is different from whey protein. The whey is the watery portion, but when you extract out the protein, you get what's called whey protein. And uh, this is the most important, or at least one of the most important anabolic that is building uh, building proteins that there are. I remember when I first heard about whey almost 25 years ago, uh, I started selling it. Nobody really heard about whey protein. And people come to my pharmacy and I have bags of whey set up for them, a whey protein that is set up for them. Uh, and uh, it was it was all the rage for a while. Whey protein was, it still is, considered the most valuable protein for athletes and for bodybuilders, although I have to say egg protein is also very important. But if you're interested in building, building muscle, building connective tissue, uh, there's really no, no better protein, although there are some that are as good. There are no better proteins than whey protein. You can find whey protein uh, in our Keto FX, uh, uh, Longevity Keto FX protein, as well as the Slender FX protein. Now, I want to talk to you about this bacterial sapiens thing, Wes. What, t- can you tell me a little bit about that? I never heard that term. Sapiens, by the way, means consciousness or awareness, as in Homo sapiens. Homo sapien is man who is aware, man who is conscious. But what's the bacterial sapiens? You know? Well, well, this was in the foreword of the book. It is coined, I guess, by a founder of the dairy. He's trying to make a point that we need a diversity of bacteria. We need enzymes, and when we kill them, 
such as pasteurization I of see. milk. It's very detrimental. We can't handle the milk. There's a lot okay. of uh, physical problems that comes from pasteurized milk. Okay, no, that's that's all true. So he doesn't mean bacteria that are conscious. He means he's calling man bacterial sapiens because we're largely composed. There's ten times more bacterial cells in our body than there are than there are human cells. You know that that gets us to a, the problem of glyphosate. You know you've heard of the pesticide glyphosate, and you, and your point is well, it was well taken. Pasteurization is really can be a really big problem because of the enzymes and the bacteria that are destroyed by the heat. Um, and that's why raw milk, that's, that's the advantages of raw milk. But uh, there's also the whole glyphosate connection. Glyphosate uh, is, is uh, bactericidal, uh, and it also kills bacteria in the gut. And I would not be surprised if we find out that our epidemic of Crohn's disease, celiac disease, and digestive illnesses at least is partially, partially related to the fact that glyphosate is everywhere, even in organic vegetation. Because glyphosate is water soluble. Glyphosate is a very interesting a toxin and pesticide because glyphosate is water soluble, unlike other toxins which tend to be fat soluble, which means glyphosate goes into the water supply, which means glyphosate is in all our water, which means glyphosate is in the rain, which means when it rains on your organic crops, there's a good chance that it's got glyphosate, in, that the, the glyphosate in the rain is going to affect the organic crops. Glyphosate can kill bacteria in the gut, and this can definitely be, be related to digestive health issues. And we're just in a world of hurt, and there's no way you can avoid that. But what you can do is you can make sure that you're on a probiotic supplement like the nightly essence from longevity. You can make sure that you're eating fermented foods, which contain good bacteria. You can make sure that you're eating fiber, lots of fiber. In fact, I consider doing a fiber beverage every day to be just as important as getting on a nutritional supplement program. Fiber not only cleans out your bowels. Fiber is not only important for detoxifying estrogen, but fiber also acts as a source of nutrition for good bacteria. You, uh, it's called a prebiotic. You can use something called inulin supplements, I-N-U-L-I-N, which acts as a prebiotic. And you can also use, uh, uh, make sure that you're getting enough vegetation, vegetables, beets especially, which are high in nitrogen, and also, uh, also spinach and watercress. These are very high nitrogen compounds, and bacteria love Nitrogen. So making sure that you're getting your nitrates and your nitrogen is another very important strategy for protecting those bacteria. Thanks so much for your call, Wes. I appreciate it. Got to move on. And I hope you have a good day. Let's see. Uh, let's go to Carl, the Truth Raider. What's up, Truth Raider? Good morning. Good morning, Ben. Well, we have a little bit of time here on the bright side this morning. so <laughs> I, I got you a couple, you more, a couple more minutes than usual. What's, going, what's on your oh, mind? Okay. No, no problem. Okay, that's great. Uh, there is on YouTube, I don't know if it's inspired by your show or not, but it's a, a YouTube channel called Bright Side. I don't know if you've ever heard of that or not, uh -uh. it's called Bright Side. They have a variety from A to Z of all kinds of particular topics that help the, uh, the human the condition, both mentally and both physical and, and riddles, and they have okay. certain challenges and certain things you can do to, to test your skills and ability, your eyesight. Uh, a lot of little, uh, I, I, would, I, I forget how you categorize it, it's like battery of, of all kinds of physical type of uh, coordination tests that you can do, stuff that's very interesting, and health tips and certain things that you didn't know okay. about in life, things that are bright. And it's called Bright Side, maybe it's inspired by our very own Pharmacist Ben. All right. I, I'm not sure that's the case, but maybe it is. So how yeah. do you get to it? You just search for Bright Side on YouTube? Yep. Yep. Just do that, and you, you, you find all kinds of things that really entertain the mind and, and do things to sharpen your cognitive skills and things that will blow your mind, things you never would think about before. But I think it's a great mental exercise to help you along with your physical you I know, love improvement, it. physical health. So I love it. I love this whole idea that we can work mentally to improve our physical state of well-being because right. we're always focused on nutrition and food, and, and rightly so, because all of these play a major role in the health of the body, obviously, how you eat, how you breathe, exercise. Sure. But, but mental health strategies are so important. Emotional health strategies are important. Spiritual health strategies are important. And, you know, I, I say periodically, I call it SMEP, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. Health is multidimensional. It's not right just physical and I'm guilty of recommending physical strategies and physical tips and and using nutritional supplements you know I'm guilty of uh, of just focusing on on the physical aspects of health but every once in a while I think it's important to recognize that how we think how we feel and our relationship to spirituality whatever that is non-religious just our relationship to spirituality plays a very very important role in how healthy or not healthy we are health the word health means whole as in wholeness 
Wholeness and health go together. Spirituality is about our connection to the universe. It's about our connection to spirit, connection to God, if you like, connection to all. And, and it's not airy-fairy. It's, physics calls it unified field theory. And this idea right. that we're all connected and we're all one and, we're, yeah. and we need to be reconnected back to whatever you want to call reality is a very important part of health. Okay. Disease is separation. You know, there's two nervous systems. We talk about this all the time. The fear nervous system or the sympathetic nervous system and the uh, thrival nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. There's only one fear. You know, if you, if you uh, go on the Internet and look up all the different fears, you'll see hundreds of them. Fear of spiders, fear of snakes, fear of clouds, fear of public speaking, fear of heights. But really there's only one fear, and that is the fear of the unknown. The unknown is... We see something as being unknown when we feel separate from it. Separation leads to the fear from unknown. I should say the sense of separation leads to the fear of the unknown. So ultimately, the sympathetic nervous system is activated. The stress nervous system, the inflammatory nervous system, the disease nervous system, dis-ease nervous system is activated by separation or by the sense of separation. Health is wholeness. Dis-ease is the sense of separation. And this is largely, uh, largely a spiritual phenomenon. We feel disconnected from the universe. We feel disconnected from each other. We feel disconnected from God. And all of this leads to activation of the, of the stress nervous system. This is where spirituality meets physicality at the level of fear or the absence of fear. And the sense of separation is what leads to that. And that, the way I look at it, that is a spiritual phenomenon. Then we get down into mental and emotional aspects. Every time we think a thought, every time we have a feeling, we create a hormone in the body, either a hormone of love and peace and content or a hormone of fear and anxiety. And so controlling the way you think, controlling the way you feel, or at least recognizing the impact of how we think and how we feel when it comes to our health is extremely important. And then the last piece of the puzzle is the physical part. That's really the last piece. The mental nature, the emotional nature, the spiritual nature, they trump the physical nature. Uh, the, the physical aspects are the last piece of the puzzle. Not that they're not important, and there's also a relationship between the physical nature and, and mental and emotional and spiritual aspects. So it's kind of like a circle. But working with the physical nature is, is last. You do that after you focus on your mental side, your emotional side, and your spiritual nature, in my humble opinion. SMEP, okay. S-M-E-P, the, multiple dimensional, the multiple, multi-dimensional nature of health. Thanks for pointing that out, Carl. Well, the yeah, I, had a, I had a couple questions, but anyway, talk about shrinkage, and I want to talk about what causes floods. you got to call back, buddy, because we got the music and the program's over. So call back. But I appreciate you bringing that up. Thank you so much, Carl. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening to the Brightside Friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for all our truth treatment products. Have yourselves a beautiful, wonderful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Thank you.